Good evening. I am Arachna the Spider People, your hostess with the mostess. And welcome to Beware Theater, because this Beware you're gonna see some really bad movies. We've got vampires, aliens, werewolves, monsters, and of course, the undead. So take a load off, pull up a couch, and fasten your seatbelt. It's gonna be a creepy night. Tonight, we watch 1943 musical comedy murder mystery, Lady of Burlesque. It was produced by Hans Stromberg, directed by William Weldman, and it has a whole bunch of surprises that you wouldn't expect from a low budget movie. Surprises like the costumes were designed by eight time Oscar winning costume designer, Edith Head. The musical score of this movie was actually nominated for an Oscar. It was based on the book, The G-String Murders, written by famous stripper, Gypsy Rose Lee, uh, but it had to be censored, of course, in order to turn it into a movie. But the most surprising thing about this movie is it starred stage, screen, television icon, Barbara Stanwyck. Yeah, that Barbara Stanwyck. She had just finished making a serious movie and wanted to try something different. And boy, does she dazzle us with snappy dialogue and singing and dancing, and of course, good acting. Lady of Burlesque is a backstage view of the last days of Times Square Burlesque wrapped around a murder mystery. Two ladies had been strangled with their G-strings and the star of the show becomes a detective to find out who did it before she becomes the next victim. There's a broken down old theater, scantily clad, or rather semi-scantily clad dancers, a trigger happy gangster, a fake Russian princess, a love triangle, and a comedian who just can't catch a break from the star of the show. Murder, mayhem, G-strings, old burlesque acts, and Barbara Stanwyck. What's not to like? So now let's watch Lady of Burlesque. Before they see SB Force's new Dixie nitroglycerin, they only break down the door. After they see her. <laughs> Krauss, just like they used to happen, this was an opera house, huh, boys? Grand opera brought crowds like this into this lobby. Girls, that's what the public wants. <laughs> Let us 
the copper that gave me this. No romance in those copper souls, Dick. Just because a guy goes through two red lights to get Quiet, him. Irish. Get upstairs and put your false face on. Dixie. Well, I just wanted to wish you luck. That's okay, comic, but keep it at a distance. Beautiful, Junior, but it's not for me. Come on and give me heat, because I don't like my music sweet. I want to feel my impulse beat. Take it off the E string, play it on the G string. If this gives you a thrill, it's happening much against my will. And only because I've caught a chill. Take it off the E string, play it on the G string. What goes a lot goes when I do my act. Boys, it's a fact. Whenever I'm applauded, you're rewarded. Each time the drummer jumps, I get goose flesh, pig and slump. I start breaking out in bumps. Brother, I'm making my eggs and bacon, earning my pay. Just by shaking this way, four shows a day. Was when crime was if you stole some dough. Now that ain't so. Cause if you lack a tire, it's the black Mariah. Mm -mm, Lady Godiva. I know what you're waiting for. Been waiting a week. And I've a mind to do some more. I'll stick around. But I don't want to break the law. But listen, brother, I've got a mother, old and gray. But she's a Lulu. I support her this way. Four shows a day. How about a little supper after the show tonight? The only date I make with comics is with the Sunday funnies. It'll be all right with me. Sunday morning breakfast. Yeah, I'm sure it would be. Hey, you forgot to take your hand out of that one. Gee, you work fast. Nothing to it, Mandy. Butterflies are usually hard to catch. Yeah, not when you've had practice. Boy, you sure have practice. Pretty sure there won't be no more room. If I heard, they can all move over. Mandy, here's some glitter to start your collection. Gee, thanks, Biff. You better tell them what that glitter is. Oh, <laughs> it's no, I don't know. Of course I know. They wear it around the uh, waist uh -huh. and they uh, have to... Mm -hmm. Well, they use uh -huh. it. <laughs> oh, you make me so mad. Keeps me young and beautiful, Alice. Don't we get any congrats from the Golden Boys Goddess? Oh, it had its novelty appeal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there are plenty of novelties around the old Oh, bravo. But that doesn't sound like one of them. If that's who I think it is, save your applause for the acts I need it. Yours. Now, is that the way to talk when I'm handing you posies? Your applause is no music to my ears, Brannigan. Where's that prop you swiped? I meant to tell you, Dixie. When you dress for our date tonight, blue is my favorite color. 
And no big hat, see, that'll get in my way. When I dress for a date with you, it'll be a suit of armor and brass knuckles. Gee, that's just a come on. She wants to make it look difficult. She'll change her tune. Honey sugar. See? Yes, darling. Russell's sugar. Ooh. What is it, Angel? I've just thought of the play. Yeah, the double play. Wait till Dolly catches up with you. How does it sound? Ah, I guess. That's for us. Shall we read it together later? Anytime you say. Why don't you give it up, goddess? It'll take one of the plays to get you and Russell out of burlesque. It'll take a dare. Oh, that we've got to have a new one. New what? Oh, the museum piece. I haven't seen one like that since the Wolf Bear Regal. In some ways, I think it would have been better to stay on the farm. Mr. Foss always says that nothing's too good for S.B. Foss players, but that thing is certainly too something for me. Me too. Hey, look, to keep your Jupy dolls from pining so much, us fellas up here are going to chip in a buck apiece on some new plumbing for you. How's that? Our hero. I'll put the switch on Moe if he's backstage. He said he knew where we could get one. It's nothing, girls. I was just doing it for that lovely young butt of the old opera, Miss Dixie Daisy. Well, I'm touched. Mandy, Joey, Bill, Biff. Maybe Biff will pay double with his new interest. You figure that way, don't forget your saloon keeper friend Louie, even if he doesn't work here. Sure, anybody that saved as much out of the rackets as Louie is a poor part of this giant upkeep. Or a dub. A white hustle down for plenty. He cares so much the guys upstairs will forget what he looks like. Well, someone else had better forget what he looks like, too. Some dames never know when a guy's fed up. Oh, uh, Dolly, uh, we were just kidding about how much Jack we could get out of upstairs for the new bric-a-brac. Yeah, I came in on the tail end of it. I'll take care of Russ since I sort of got the habit. Good thing you have, girlie. You sure couldn't hold a man unless you did pay up. Oh, Think they're better than an honest man that works for a living and don't pose around on no stage. Excuse me. Oh, Mr. Foss, you got me Hey, what'd you do to the statue of a hermit? Boy, were you getting dished by the gruesome twosome. It's gin. You know, alcohol like they use in hospitals. Yeah, well, I know a better place to use it. Get me. And the next time you girls pull a free-for-all, don't pull it during my act. You know, it's tough enough doing something artistic for those lugs out there without you and Dolly calling each other by your right name. Well, you do, honey. Drop your spangles. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was embarrassing, believe me. But very successful. <gasps> what hit me? How do you left, Miss Dixie? We're on. Coming. Well, girls, keep the home fires under control. Shall we join the customers? That's what we're getting paid for. You're gonna feel pretty silly someday when you remember acting like this. If I remember you that long. Oh, you'll remember. We're gonna make sensational partners. Sure about that? Oh, I mean it's some of our dance routines. Naturally. Never any doubt what a comic means. You better settle down to it, Dixie. Looks like you and I are in for a good long run here. I've been training for it. I can keep ahead of you. Hurry up, Miss Dixie, where you're on. I think you need 
I said no, I mean no. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to meet a blonde. A blonde? That blonde that works the dice in Kelly's pool room. Uh, maybe you know it. No, I don't know her. Hey, I want a blonde. You want a blonde? What kind of a blonde? Any kind. One like this, or one like this, or one like this. Just a blonde. Hey, how come you have all the luck with the girls? Because, my boy, I have something you haven't got. Oh, you got a magic thing there, a secret weapon? little article. All I have to do is wave that little persuader under the lady's nose. She gives me anything I want. Anything? Anything at all. Hey, sell it to me. Well, my boy, that's a very valuable article. My price would be $1,000. Yeah, uh, so long. Hey, lady, you left your motor running. Don't get excited. You didn't start. I thought I could stop it. Hey, maybe I ought to buy that thing, huh? I thought you said you wanted a blonde. Ah, she looks like she's a blonde at heart. Here, here, you can't talk that way about that sweet, charming, innocent young lady. I was just trying to tell her that... Never mind what you were trying. Now, are you interested in purchasing this persuader or not? Well, it seems like an awful lot of money for such a small article. My boy, don't you realize the best things always come in small packages? Yeah, but before I spend all that money, how do I know it's going to work? Of course it'll work. All you have to do is put that little persuader under the lady's nose. She gives you anything you want. Oh, hello. Oh, there's never anybody around there with your water. What is it? It looks like a raid. I'm trying to get thoughts. A raid! Hello, hello! That red light's supposed to flash when the cops are in the lobby. Well, why isn't it working? That's well, but uh, couldn't you make it a little cheaper? Well, I might sell it in the neighborhood of $500. Uh, that's an expensive neighborhood. Well, uh, how much money have you got? Oh, roughly $400. What do you mean, roughly? Well, when you smooth it out, it's three bucks. Well, yes. enough of this nonsense now. Because I like you, and because huh? you have an honest face... Murder. I'm going to sell you this little article for one hundred dollars. One hundred dollars. Remember, my boy, just uh, pass it under her nose. Just pass it under her nose. Anything I ask for, anything. Now you've done it. They heard that hand you got way down at the police station. Something smells fishy around here. <clears throat> Why wasn't that light on? Because somebody didn't want it on. Look! Cut as clean as a whistle right here under my nose. And by somebody who... Give me your money. When the lights blank out, make a break for the cold shoot. Know where it is? I don't hang around the same parts of this theater that you do. Give me a kiss. In the cellar next to the vacant room and cut the end of the blackout. Not a chance, Brannigan. I've been saving up for this all evening. Hey, wait for me. in the wagon. I, S.B. Foss, out of my own pocket have hired limousines to take you to jail. Three cheers for Foss, our boss. Yes, he came just in the nick of time. <laughs> Call in. Well, you didn't have to, didn't have to watch. Nothing, no, no. One hour. S.B. Foss gives you his word. In one hour, I will have you out. So lovely singer and dancer Dixie Daisy is new to the old opera burlesque house, and she's a big hit with the crowd. She's also a big hit with comedian Biff, who keeps hitting on her, but she doesn't like comics, so she doesn't give him the time of day. She's also not very popular with the other lady performers who apparently don't like each other anyhow. I mean, wisecracks, insults, Catfights and bottles are thrown all over their crappy dressing room 
and they have no privacy. I mean, the guy performers can hear everything they say in their dressing room through the pipes, and that's how they communicate. But in spite of all that, they are troopers, and they run up and down the stairs, they hit their marks, and they put on a show until the cops come and take them off to the pokey for the umpteenth time. So as a point of history, burlesque as a type of entertainment originated in London back in the 1830s, where it was musical parody of popular theater shows and politics, and the people who came to see the shows were mainly middle-class families. However, in 1840, burlesque came to the United States, and it had traveling troops that had two shows. One was a clean show, and one was a hot show. And over time, the hot show got hotter and hotter, and more and more clothes got taken off. And in the 1920s and 30s, burlesque kind of faded away because there were more and more police raids for indecency, and other entertainment like movies were cheaper. So in 1943, when this movie was made, movie censorship code prohibited showing what burlesque was really like. So this movie is not really one of the burlesque hot shows, but a lukewarm show. I mean, no stripping. Bumps and grinds were not seen. You could only show the actors at the top. And the clothes pretty much covered the ladies. And even the G-string murder weapon could only be shown around the actor's neck or in their hands, not down where they really wore them. What, Deadly? No, I don't want to watch you strip. You normally don't wear any clothes, so why is taking them off a big deal? I said one hour, didn't I? Well, here we are. All ready for our little snack of steaks and champagne. <laughs> what else could the cops do when not one of you did anything to warrant such a, such a ignoble act like that raid? But, it wasn't the cops that kept the light from flashing. It was someone right from our middle. And it wasn't the cops that tried to strangle me. That female flatfoot was wearing gloves. Oh! Dixie, what are you talking about? When the lights went on, I made for the coal chute. I was starting down the stairs when somebody grabbed me. Mandy, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, it wasn't me, Dixie. Honest, it wasn't. Somebody grabbed me and tried to strangle me. Those hands were long and thin, and they knew what they were doing. They were strong enough to make me black out. Sugar, you're still blacked out. Dixie, somebody was trying to find his way out. Yeah, and that is a funny thing to mistake for a signpost. Well, I've seen a lot of pink elephants in my day, honey, but never a strangler. Besides, who'd want to kill you? Well, I don't say they wanted to kill me. What I'm saying is that somebody in that theater tried to kill somebody else. Maybe somebody does want to get rid of somebody else around here. Just what do you mean by that? I mean that three people get crowded at a table for two. And when some people get crowded, they push. Please, please. Whatever we got in the old opera house, we ain't got murderers. <laughs> right. And this is my answer to such foolishness. Ah, wallpaper. You should have such wallpaper to pretty up your house. <laughs> to each and every one of my actors, I give free and without cost. One paid in full share of my personal stock in the old opera house. Come on up, everybody, and get it. Now we are one for all and all for the old opera house. So, Sir Galahad finally got here. You got a bad temper, Songbird. Why don't you come down and get me? I called you, didn't I? I don't go near jails, I don't go near cops, you know that. But a cell crawling with floozies is all right for me. I can be booked like a common tramp, can't I? You might have liked it if your boyfriend had serenaded you. Might have worked with the quartet with yourself, buddy. Big Louis the Grin. Turns gray when he sees a cop like a gunsel. You shouldn't have plugged that car Get your coat. Hello, Sir Galahad. 
You uh, won't get too lonesome for us, will you? More like it. Do you mind, Curly? Not at all. Thank you. See that? He gets it quicker than you do. We belong together. Champagne cocktail, please. In a flash saw, Garçon, too. Mm, Linguist. Oh, French. I see you've been here before. Oh, beer's a lot better for you. Always got your best interest at heart. That's me. And I left upstairs to come down here with you. Steak, champagne. Yeah, but things upstairs were getting sudden and violent. Yeah. They've been that way all evening. Biff, I wonder... Hey, forget that stuff, will you? Oh, I get it. You're just pulling this act to make me feel protective. Don't you ever figure on anybody telling the truth? Not burlesque, dames. They used to wriggling out of things. <laughs> Did you get that one? <laughs> Dixie, tell me something. Mm -mm. You tell me. Who'd want to close the old opera? More important, who'd be after me? Well, Dixie, I guess I'll have to confess. It was just me taking a natural advantage of the dark. Oh, no. That's not where you'd grab me. <laughs> Go ahead. Make a mystery out of it. But didn't you say before they were probably after somebody else? Yeah, I know, but... Oh, let's get out of here and get some fresh air. I want to think this thing out. If you promise to think something else over first. We're on that track again. Dixie, I don't get it. I've always gotten along before. Is it the set of my shoulders you don't like? The, the look in my eyes? No. No, your shoulders aren't bad. Your eyes are a pretty color. But... I guess what I need with you is a good four-leaf clover. Uh-huh. No, you need more than that, Brannigan. You're a comic. What is the matter with comics? I went into show business when I was seven years old. Two days later, the first comic I ever met stole my piggy bank on a railroad station in Portland. When I was 11, the comics were looking at my ankles. When I was 14, they were... just looking. When I was 20, I'd been stuck with enough lunch checks to pay for a three-story house. Now, oh, they're shiftless, dame-chasing, ambitionless. I've got it. You're ambitious. Well, maybe I'd like to get away from comedy. I can see it right now. Your name up there. Diddy Daisy in Broadway's latest hit. You know what I'm going to do opening night? Uh-uh. Buy the whole first row just for me. Sounds nice, Brannigan. You'll see. Won't take long either. Come on, let's get out of here. Yeah. Hey. Uh-uh. That's why I ordered beer. I said it was to your interest. Comics. <laughs> If the cops had heard her last night, they'd have used her for a siren. We artists all have to put up with jealousy. You look in this window once more and you'll get a bottle over there. Those Chuck Suey hustlers don't stop Why don't you dress someplace else? It's my dressing room. And it's their the porch. They're probably a darn sight hotter than that. Why are they hot tonight? A couple of salads fell right out of their boxes. What's that work of art? Laurel leaves for the party tonight. We're going to have a regular unveiling. Like when you unveil statues of generals and horses and things. Maybe that'll teach you to mind your own business. What's the matter to you, Dane? But someone had to teach them that a lady's entitled to privacy. You'll get plenty of privacy if that waiter's hurt. They have laws for people like you. Oh, yeah? Who gave you a cue? Stick to your own business and I'll stick to mine. Stick to my own business? That's a laugh. I've stood for your knives in the back to keep a little peace around here, but I'm through. If you're not jumping on us, you're knocking off waiters who wouldn't look at you if you were rolled in batter and french fries. And I'm through letting a corn belt up stock get pushed ahead of me. Where does everybody get the idea you're so hot? Uh, Maybe the customers get the idea. You can have these customers. I'm getting out of this grindhouse. Now, is that a sight? I ask you. Hold it. Mm -mm. If they could get moonlight on that stage, horse would be a millionaire tomorrow. Where you off to, Miss Venus? I'm on a peace mission. If you hear any screams, tell Force to hire a new woman. Uh-uh. You won't lose any arguments. Not looking like that. You won't have time. 
You know, if this were real lasso, I'd drag you up here like a calf in a western. Only no calf ever had a hide as pretty as that. What would you do when you got me? You've had a little trouble putting the brand on so far. Ah, that's so far. After a sight like that, my Irish ancestors would rise up in their graves if Brannigan missed the bus. I hate to disturb your ancestors. I show you too much sense. And if you want to stop something, hey, the girl pass up is nearly finished. You better get ready. Oh, now, wait a minute, boys. I'm carrying a white flag. You Chinese fight too darn well for us to want to mix with you. Come here, let me take a look at that. That isn't a way to take care of it. You go back. We have nothing to do with you. Yeah, we'll have something to do with this. Here. Uh, no dinners? No more dinners, ever, no. Oh, now, look, we had to put up with enough of that dame without her starving us out in the bargain. She was born with an axe in her mouth. She ought to be put out of her misery like a mad dog. Come on. Tell me you'll bring us our dinners, and I'll smoothie the divorce into giving you some passes. Things getting a little bit difficult for you, Biff? Yeah, Mandy. You know how it is. Sometimes these things take time. They sure do. You gotta plan it out. Sometimes you finagle them this way, and other times you finagle them that way. That's why I like sweet dumb girls like Alice. No finagling. We bring the dinner. Nice, Miss Spirit. Don't spare the ice until that's better. See you later. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Ginseng root. You eat it, makes you live a long time. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So he slips you one of those never die things, huh? Yes, Mr. Brannigan. It's a charm to ward off the evil spirit. The same charming gathering. Hello. Well, look what the pixies brought in out of the rain. The same old, familiar faces. And some new arrivals. Who are you? I'm Dixie Daisy. This is Gigi Graham. Who are you? I am the Princess Nervina, star of this theater. I have been in the hospital for the last two weeks. Dislocated vertebrae. Maybe she took a little trip to Toledo, for old time's sake. I have never worked in, how you say, to Toledo. Don't give me that accent business. You know how to say it when I first knew you. Toledo. I don't go to Toledo. Only tramps work in Toledo. Well, they get around. No. I should have danced before royalty. Instead, the princess throws pearls to swine. You snooty. We're on again, beautiful. Hello, Black Iris. Wasn't bad luck. I'd let her have it. Who was that overexposed debutante? A dame will think she's four times sharper than she is. There's one thing I hate, it's a phony. I should have danced before royalty. Instead, the princess throws pearls to swine. I had a black cat like that once, and there wasn't so much of it. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be too hard on her. She's bad luck to some people, not so bad to others. If anyone else drops in, then I should meet. Tell them I'm on stage. Thank you for a little distance. Leave us have order and leave us have quiet. Bring the prince before the I bar. startled you? Lately, sister, I've been startled by experts. Uh, tell me, while I have been gone, has this uh, Yulita, has she said anything about me? No, oh, no. You were a smash surprise, Billy. It is only that some people talk too much. And this Yulita talks a lot too much. Not to me. Ask the others in the dressing room. I dress alone, downstairs. I'd rather live in a big sty than with those women. What are you doing, Jake? Moving up the whole prop room? I gotta do my surprises upright, Dixie. Still clumsy, eh? Yes, I am back. Just visiting, I hope. Stay in, Mr. Prop Man. Court finds you guilty of being drunk and finds you five dollars. Here's a ten dollar bill. Ten dollar bill? I haven't got any change. Go out and get drunk again. <laughs> Now arranged for seeing the crown of the most case for Miss Peaches Wilson. Miss Peaches Wilson! Oh.
Come on, what are you waiting for? You're on. Oh, sorry, Sam. Oh, hello, Excellency. V. What is dark? Dark? She does what you do, only they like it better. You two can trade notes at that wing ding they're throwing tonight. Do you think I would go? I, the princess? Free drinks, Highness. I might come. Now I want to see Mr. Foss. Is he here? Right in the same old restaurant. Want me to tell him you're back? Tell him to come to my dressing room. Well, yeah. Mary, child, no. Why don't I get a cigar? I'll be back right away. The truth. Oh, that old thing. Were you over up before me? I don't know. What time do you get up? Now, Miss Peaches, the facts of the case are clear to me. You plead guilty or not guilty? Don't you think that's a rather personal question? Oh, you'll have to tell him. Why? 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 Because according to the Constitution of the Bylaw State of Coma, Section 63, Upper 7, Car 84, leading for South Mississippi at all points where it's distinctly said you it all he 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 I hold you in contempt. I don't like you either. I don't like you either. Well, I don't like you either, 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 either. Enough of that. Who's a carpenter with a hammer? How dare you refer to me as a carpenter? I am just as... Yeah, well, I'm just as too. Just as who? Just as good as you. What for? I'm not thirsty. Step aside. It's all dark and withered, and gentlemen are passing. All my sacrifices, Alfred, are but keys to open the gates of heaven and let me be with you. I'll bat him in the aisles with that one. I feel it. Here. It says here in the complaint that you hit your husband over the head with a frying pan. Black both his eyes... Are coming, Sammy. Some people don't learn easy, Songbird. Now, don't do it, Louis. They take a lot of lessons before they stay in line. Now, don't do it, Louis. No! much against my will, and only cause I caught a chill. Take it off the E-string, play it on the G-string. So the lie goes when I do my act. Whenever I'm a boy, or rewarded, I try to make it love
Jake must trust you comics as far as he can throw the prop room. What's up now? Oh, that ceiling wax on the box the waiter gave me. He's got it on the catch of the door. Sometimes I think you don't have the right respect for your fellow workers. Maybe I ought to try Louis' masterful touch on you. Good thing the goddess didn't hear that. Hey, Sammy! The pillar isn't up here. Oh, what the deuce. She can't miss this number. It's the finale. Look, Stall. You had to stand on your heads out there to keep looking stall. That day causes more trouble around here than a forest fire. What do you mean she isn't here? Have you looked? Yeah. Look out, Jake Seals there. Oh, I know. If I wouldn't. Woo! Look. Around her neck. It's her teeth, Jake. It ain't there for an ornament either. You best get the police quick. So while the cops are raiding the opera house, someone reaches out in the dark and tries to strangle Dixie Daisy. Who could that be? Could that be Biff trying to cop a feel? I don't think so. I mean, Biff would have copped his feel much lower on her anatomy. I wonder who it was. So now that the burlesque troupe has been bailed out of jail, things get back to normal. Wisecracking, backstabbing, and romantic upheaval. So the big boss, in order to raise morale and increase loyalty, gives one share in the business to each and every one of the players, which really wasn't worth anything, folks, because burlesque was on its way out. So while everyone was celebrating, surprise, fake Russian Princess Nirvana shows up. She'd been in the hospital for two weeks because she put her back out bumping and grinding. And while she was gone, she discovered that the new girl, Dixie Daisy, had taken over her act. Rare. And here's where we see Barbara Stanwyck do something she didn't do in her other movies. She sang. She jitterbugged. She did the splits. She did break dancing. She did all of that for real. Actually, Barbara Stanwyck had been a Ziegfeld Follies girl back when she was 16. So I'm guessing that was a good training for this movie. So while Barbara's tearing up the scenery doing her act, unpopular Lolita Laverne gets beat up by her gangster boyfriend and she's screaming her head off, interrupting the act. Also, very mysteriously, the princess and also comedian Russell Rogers are sneaking up and down the stairs in the opera house. What's that about? Hmm. So when Dixie Daisy gets back to her empty dressing room after her act, she discovers in the closet that Laverne had been strangled to death with her G-string. Bah! Who could have done that? Uh, Deadly, why are you dressed like that? You're going to Toledo, and you don't want anybody to recognize you. Now, to repeat what I was saying, since Miss Daisy was uh, busy downstairs, someone who was in the room immediately after the body was discovered took that G-string for reasons of his or her own. What G-string? The murder weapon, Miss Daisy. Well, it was her own G-string, and it was around her neck. We all saw it. All but the police. The G-string had disappeared by the time we arrived at the theater. Well, maybe it just fell off. How could anybody take the G-string in that crowd? Everybody in the theater ran in. We are not interested in how it was done. We are interested in who did it, where the weapon was put, and why it was taken. Well, why don't you search us and settle that part of it? Muscles, it looks like he might enjoy it. You can search me, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> not that I could hide anything on me. <laughs> and the lady's point is well taken. And a search after this time in this crowd would only cause confusion. It's getting a little too warm here for me. Well, there's been plenty of time for concealment. But if one of you could suggest why it was taken. Send out a call for Louis Grindero. Complete description of him and the car. Louis did it? Well, that's settled it. Now we can go home. What did I tell you? I'm afraid uh, that doesn't quite settle the matter. But he ran away. Please be seated. Rindero took his car, as much cash as he had in the saloon next door, after receiving a call from, uh... Okay, so I called him. When we was in the racket, she did me a couple of turns. All I did was tell him she was dead. I don't care how Louie knew about anything. I know Lolita was so scared of what he was going to do that she was taking it out on us. I know he started something... He's got his reasons. He's scared of cops. The pen tore something loose in him, and ever since... 
He knew what they would do if they got him in again. Well, he may or may not be guilty of this murder. He'll be examined as thoroughly as any of you when he is picked up. But, Lolita Laverne was murdered between the time she came upstairs after her quarrel with Grindero and the finding of her body. Before I went up at the end of our act. Perhaps. During most of that time, the room was cleared. But the murderer had time to strangle Laverne, break Jake's seal, and replace it with one of his own. I know she wasn't in there when I put the seal on. If she had been, I'd have said something. Let us hope so. The stagehands could wander about the theater at will. Candy Butcher? The stage manager who was angry? What are you getting at? Sure, I was sore. No, oh, she was... Even the flyman, who makes no secret of his dislike of burlesque performers. You don't like burlesque performers either, Statue. Oh, they're not the easiest in the world to get along with. <laughs> they, they don't like my pipe. Uh, Mr. Rogers. Yeah? Where were you? I was first on for the finale. Before that, I was dressing. I... Oh, yes, uh, Miss Norvina. I am the Princess Norvina. And I was in my dressing room until I hear the excitement. Is that so? Well, why didn't you ask her about Toledo? Laverne was always making cracks about Toledo. Making cracks, period. I told her I had never worked in Toledo. That is the truth. Is it not the truth, Mr. Foss? Isn't it? She never worked in my Toledo theater with Levine. As for cracks lover make, it is as this person says. Cracks, period. The cracks she made to her were enough to start a fight. Yeah? Well, I was mad enough to take a poke at her. And I'm mad now. Hey, you, uh, <coughs> you took a poke with a nail file, our report shows. Well, I grabbed at anything I could lay my hands on. That sounds natural, but a nail file, that could be used to, uh, well, to kill a person, couldn't it? Sure. And if the weapon was murderous, the attack might be considered murderous, mightn't it? Wait a minute. You're running words around me like a brush fire. Not words, Miss Baxter. Facts. I'm not responsible for the facts. Mr. Rogers was responsible for the quarrel because of his interest in Miss Levine. We hope to produce a play I obtained on the legitimate stage. Our interest was purely professional. Miss Laverne threw a bottle at Mr. Wong earlier in the evening. You resented that. I was mad. I was plenty mad. Bringing on a quarrel between Miss Laverne and Miss Daisy. Which had been coming on for a long time. Put that in, too. She said Laverne should be put out of her misery like a mad dog. Is that true, Miss Daisy? Yeah, well, it, it was a figure of speech. An unfortunate one, seeing it was acted on so suddenly. Now I have something to say. Yes? We are all in the room after the body is found. I am next to her. Suddenly she notices something on her finger. She turns away to wipe it off. It is red. Like the wax on the door, perhaps. How we get to that? Since you started this reunion, you've made one charge after another. You knew it was my print on that wax when I walked into this room, but you've been setting a little bombshell for the last spot in the bill. I really had changed the wax. Do you think I'm dumb enough to leave my print in the middle of it? Murderers are caught by mistakes, Miss Daisy. I was in the dressing room. I saw the wax. I was curious, and I touched it. Why did you later furtively wipe it off? I wiped it off, but not furtively. You turned away from me. I turn away from garbage dumps, too. One more thing. The wax that was used to reseal the door has been identified as coming from the box given to you by Mr. Wong. I gave it to Lolita. You knew about it. Everybody who was in the room knew about it. I thought you were regular. I didn't think you'd try to pull the blame on us. I wasn't trying to. Laverne hated each other's insides. Her remarks are shown, ma'am. There are plenty of people I don't like. You, for one. But I don't go around killing them. I didn't say you did. I merely said that you hated the Laverne girl. That you were the only person admittedly in the dressing room during the time the murder occurred. That the wax used to reseal the door came from a box given to you. That your fingerprint was on the wax. That is, you tried to take that wax from your finger without being noticed. Stop it! Why, you two-faced snooper? Wait a minute. Inspector, there, there is some mistake. Inspector, there's a big mistake. Mr. Brannigan. You can't think this girl did that murder. Why, look at her. Sitting there, so beautiful and defenseless. Why, only last week she came to this theater and made more friends than a whole litter of kittens. Why, she couldn't any more... Daisy is very beautiful, but she doesn't strike me as being either fragile or ethereal. Yeah. 
Well, furthermore, that woman wasn't out of my sight all evening. That's a silly lie. She just said she was alone in the dressing room. But while we're talking about lies, why don't you give yourself top billing? You forgot to mention that you told us guys this afternoon that you'd kill the leader if she kept running around with that Louis. Well, perhaps I felt like killing her. But I loved her. I wanted to marry her. I loved her too much to kill her. Is there something you wanted to tell me, Miss Baxter? No. Didn't you want to tell me it's impossible for Russell Rogers to marry Lolita Laverne? No, no, no. Impossible because he's already married? Married to you? <laughs> You're surprised that I know this. Two years ago, when you were booked during a raid, may interest you to know your record was collected. We didn't want to make it known because we knew that Foss didn't hire married couples. When I saw her making a play for him, I wanted to tell, but he wouldn't let me. He told me he loved her and she never loved me. Yeah, and what did you tell me? She wasn't crying the night she threatened to kill Laverne and me. Look at this. Those marks. She did that a week ago. The night I threatened to leave her. That isn't true. It's all lies. How long did you have to practice to make like such a heel? Yeah. Uh, please. This is the coroner's preliminary report. Lolita Laverne was poisoned. She would have died in three minutes if the strangler had not interfered. In other words, the murderer was so impatient he couldn't wait for his poison to take effect. Or, there are two murderers in the old opera house. This is my first experience with burlesque. It's a surprising profession. You will all remain within reaching distance until the case is settled. Poisoned. I could use one too. Where are you going? This. This. What? The picture of Laverne's mother is gone. Why, that's... Lolita's. I threw it out in the roof. This. Listen, T. I found this in my pocket. Somebody slipped it there, but I didn't think they'd do that. They aren't believing anything. So I backed up towards the window. For well, once, a comic showed some brains. Get rid of it. Oh, no, Dixie. I couldn't do that. I've been thinking. I was a coward. Steve. This is evidence, important evidence. This is the murder weapon. And they're bearing down on you. Do you think I could think of myself? I'm going to turn it in. But if they won't believe you. I'll have to take that chance, Dixie. When I saw you in trouble up there, Harrigan pushing you around, I'd, well... Yes, I know. You stuck up for me. That was swell of you. Maybe you changed your mind about me? Well, now, don't rush me. After all, you are a comic. It'd be swell to think you had. Maybe you worry. Well, maybe for a few minutes you... Oh, my goodness, you two certainly have strange taste in romance. Imagine being alone in a room where a woman was murdered and with a man. <laughs> we wanted you to join the party. Looks like we broke one up. I'm coming, but pipe this. The picture of Laverne's mother is gone. Was it there tonight? She never let it out of her sight. She carried it here and home again. She spoke to it, too. Oh, Mr. Kelly, I'll be so excited to hear about this. Oh, no, you don't, Angel. What's no more questions until we get some sleep? Maybe we both could do with some of that. Uh-uh. Tonight I got too much on my mind for sleep. Good night, Dixie. Good luck, Irish. What you got in your hand there, bud? Oh, nothing. I just... Uh, hello. Don't make a move till I get down here. Oh, me? What's the matter with a guy getting a little fresh air out here? Now, let's see what you're trying to tuck away, funny man. Oh, nothing. I was just... Uh, Give. Uh, really? I, I just walked out... The Give. Well, now, ain't that cute and pretty? A murder weapon. Or maybe you carry it for sentimental reasons. Why'd you kill a bird? Now, ain't that just like a flat foot? I found it in my pocket, planted. That's why I was looking for you, to give it to you. Oh, you found it. You were going to give it to me. Out here? Well, it's dark and I had a look for you. Oh, you had a look, did you? Were you looking for me down the drain pipe? 
Do I look like the kind of a guy you'd find down a drain pipe? Hmm. Maybe I wouldn't look in such a classy spot for such a dumb flat foot as... The inspector's gonna be plenty interested in a guy who tries to get rid of murder weapons. We'll just take a little ride down to headquarters. Oh, sure, we'll go down and see the inspector. Sure, that, that's why I was looking for you in the first place. Now, now, look, I'll explain it again. You see, it was dark, and I was looking for you. And, and uh, I, I bent down to get a better look at the upstairs dressing room window, you see? My arm was hanging down by the drain pipe, and... and... What is that drain pipe doing there? I can confirm that, officer. I'm sure Mr. Brannigan only wanted to do his duty. He was so worried about important evidence. Well, I'm through talking. Go on, you burlesque people are on such a merry-go-round, you'll have me catching brass rings. But this guy give you a chuckle, Dixie. He couldn't find a goldfish in a cold cream jar. You aren't using that drain pipe for a maypole. Oh, now listen, Dixie, I was just... Uh... Oh, well. Maybe that little kiss was worth it. Good thing for you. It's the last little kiss you get from this working girl. Maybe life in the electric chair wouldn't be so bad. Maybe if... you'll get a try. Come on. Hotel Bernard. about that lug sitting in the cell, are you? Well, I was thinking how we felt when we pulled out of Columbus. The old opera was going to be the last rung on the ladder to the great white way. You're doing all right. Oh, sure, fine. First we're into comics, then murders. Now that Cossack from Canarsie is on in my spot. Then maybe you were expecting my two weeks' notice. On second thought, no notice. Sue me. Is it so bad? And I'm not working for a less for laughs. This little girl's got her way to make in the world. When you brought me here, you promised me the moon. Now I'm getting green cheese and not liking it. Why? I've been doing all right. My face hasn't fallen apart since yesterday. I know. She wants to get out of burlesque. She wants me to produce a show for her. I told her to wait. She gets impatient, so... Family, huh? So that's the fire that started in Toledo. She went to South America and then she came back. Letters, canceled checks, copies of. Yeah, I guess. Dixie. I, I don't know what to do. Don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. You look thoughtful, Miss Daisy. Thoughtful is no word, Stacy. I'm not surprised. 
Every day is more and more trouble around the old opera. Not like the old days, huh? Well, we had trouble then. Not murders, maybe, but I could tell you. <laughs> the prima donna would get notes, maybe, from one of the boxers in dozens of roses. And after the performance was over, we of the company would wait and see the prima donna go out. And there would be crowds and the wealthiest men in the city waiting in evening clothes and carriages. I... I was very torn. Lost your voice, huh? And so I took up smoking a pipe and sitting here. We were no better than you people for saving the money. Well, home again after 20 years in the clink, framed by the villain, the light in the window, the faithful caretaker, and the little woman Did waiting. Did they give you a watchdog? Not exactly, Miss Daisy. If you would tell Miss Angel I'm here. What's this? Ha! Huh. You're behind in your literature, Irish. He's a 35 years old. You ain't whistling this literature. I learned more about burlesque in five minutes than I did all the time that I was... Yeah, there. well, hurry it up or we'll send Joey on again and you can sit in the clink for good. Get a load of that guy. How come you're not here? How the hell let me go? No evidence. What? They found Louis' car right around the corner from the theater, so he didn't use that in his getaway. They didn't find Laverne's picture of her mother, but they did find the frame. Where? Ah, they won't say where. They found Lolita's bank book in her apartment. Yesterday, she drew 10,000 smackers out of the bank. Now, where did that money go to? Maybe down the drain pipe with the rest of the evidence. Aren't you a teeny-weeny bit glad to see me back? No. Here are your pal. Do you want a cake? foreign country. And before me stands this mysterious Egyptian gazika box. This is the land of the tsetse fly, the guna guna bird, and the can can girl. Also those strange mysterious love potions, which nowadays we call vitamin pills. I am what is known as an archaeologist. An archaeologist is a guy that digs up mummies. Well, the other day I dug up a mummy, and he was a hepcat. How did I know he was a hepcat? Because he turned to me and said, do you dig me, Jack? <laughs> Around the neck again. Bring the curtain down. So police inspector Harrigan comes to the opera house to investigate the death of Lolita Laverne. He gathers everybody up and he discovers that many of them have means, motive, and opportunity to kill her. I mean, her jealous gangster boyfriend Louie had argued with her beat her up, and left the scene. So he had motive. Dixie Daisy found her dead in an empty dressing room, so she had opportunity. The old geezer stagehands hated the burlesque dancers, so they had motive. The comedian Russell Rogers, who was secretly married to Dolly, was having an affair with Lolita. And Dolly attacked her with a nail file. So she had motive. And then the princess had this thing going on with Lolita, whether she'd been to Toledo or hadn't been to Toledo. So I don't know, maybe that was motive. And then the murder weapon, the G-string, disappears. And then it reappears in Biff's coat pocket. Somebody tried to frame him to show means. And who stole Laverne's mother's picture? Oh, I'm so confused. Wait a minute. Hold the phone. Hello? Yes? Okay. What? Wow. Thanks. The coroner's report is in. Lolita Laverne was poisoned. So does that mean there are two murderers? Well, it's better than that, folks. There's two murders. Because when Biff and Dixie go out for their next act, they find the princess dead in a prop cabinet. 
she'd been strangled with her g-string. Oh, wow. Thanks, Deadly. Wait a minute. How did you get access to the coroner's hotline? Oh, you saw him at a burlesque show and he gave it to you to keep you quiet from telling his wife he was there. <laughs> when was she last seen alive? After her number, I guess. Inspect Inspector, could it, could it be suicide? even before it was pinned on him. Well, I guess we can cross off one of our question marks. Or hang one more on our collection. Oh, don't look at me as if I were crazy. Put it down to women's intuition, but I'm sure feeling a chunk of it. Why should he kill the princess? If we knew all the motives in murder cases, Miss Daisy, there would be no mysteries. And besides, the pop room was locked. What's that? It was all right. If he was hiding inside, he couldn't have got out to kill the princess. Well, I guess we're going to have to go upstairs again. Round them up. Yes, sir. Why was the uh, prop room locked? Had to be. Why, only a month ago, a certain comic walked out with a bundle of my dishes that he says is laundry. Last night, the prop room was open. Some of the liquor was stored there for the party, and Louie must have run in through the basement and ducked there. Then we trapped him when we went in for that bracer, and I locked the door when we left. He couldn't have got out after you left? No, sir. <laughs> Well, seems like we're right back where we started. <laughs> Over the pop room. Oh. Found anybody here? You, Jay? I... Yes, I... Well, that's Laverne's picture of a... I found it. Honest, I found it like I did the frame, just after that ruckus about the body. I was going to turn it in, too, but it was torn, and you scared me, and I... No reason for you to be scared, unless you were guilty, Jay. You don't believe me. Listen, there's plenty of people been acting suspicious around here lately. He never said nothing about knowing the princess. Ask him why he took her to her hotel last night, and went upstairs with her, too. Ask her why she followed him, why she was still sitting there when I left. Why did you follow the princess, Jay? Well, I, I was just trying to help. Yes. Yes, Jay? No. Inspector. He was only trying to help me. Go on, Mr. Boss. I lied. The princess did work in my Toledo theater. We were... We were well acquainted. Blackmail, Mr. Boss? I see. Was the princess satisfied with what you were giving her? <laughs> she kept quiet. She wanted a lot. You had uh, every reason to wish that she were dead, didn't you? Inspector, I... Uh, I... Miss Baxter, I, I beg your pardon, Mrs. Rogers. Why were you following the princess last night? Well, I couldn't make it out. First Laverne and then the princess. I was trying to figure the connection. Naturally. Uh, Mr. Rogers... Why did you go home with the princess? Gentlemen don't usually answer that question. Since when were you a gentleman? <laughs> How long did you stay? I can tell you. I sat up long enough in that lobby chair to fall asleep. When I woke up, he was standing at the cigar stand buying a box of cigars and a humidor to put him in. Cigar? <laughs> well, 
That doesn't sound very much as though he were in a murdering mood, does it? <laughs> you have any cigars on you now, Mr. Rogers? Sure. Go ahead. Oh. Mm. Excellent brand. Excellent. Why, Mr. Rogers? Why suddenly switch to the most extravagant cigars you can buy? And a whole box at a time, not the usual two or three, and a humidor to keep them in. Why, Mr. Rogers? Let me tell you. $10,000 is missing, taken the murdered woman. Enough to buy a good many of these cigars. Money taken by you. Oh, no. Laverne was afraid of Louis. She was going to throw you over. But you wanted the money she had promised. Was that why she withdrew the $10,000? Yeah, yeah, that's it. She gave me the money. When? What time of day? Oh, no. You took that money when she was dead. Or dying. You poisoned her. But she was strong, tough. You watched her writhing and crawling toward the door. She was going to call for help. Oh, stop it. The princess gave me the money. Princess? Sounds like a stall to me. Please. Why, Mr. Rogers? Well, to produce my play. She wanted to get out of burlesque. I heard her kill the bird. Go on. Well, uh, after Louis left, they were making cracks at me, and I... I went down to the princess' room. She wasn't there. She was up with Laverne. I heard them talking through the ventilator. Lolita knew about Toledo, and she'd been threatening to tell Foss's wife and crab the princess' racket. Last night, Navina pretended she didn't mind paying off. That there was enough for both of them. They'd drink to it. I heard her fill the glasses, and then Lolita gagged. You sat by through that? After a couple of minutes, I went up. The princess was coming down from the third floor. When she left the room, she must have heard someone coming up, the, the strangler, and ducked upstairs. But on the way down, I saw her open the door and look in for a minute. Oh, don't you see? That's why she had to be killed. She saw you, perhaps. Did you come up to finish her job? You knew about the money. Oh, the little said she had it on her, but it was gone when I took the G-string. I ought to scare your teeth for planting it on me. Well, I had to get rid of it. Mm, makes me squirm. Why should I kill the princess? Dead women tell no tales, Mr. Rogers. Oh, no, no. I, I couldn't do it. Believe me, I couldn't. No, I don't believe you could. You let me go? No, Mr. Rogers. It's a very uncomfortable thing to be an accessory after the fact. Take Mr. Rogers down to headquarters. Book it. Right. Oh, right. You got me in this take a filthy hands off. I must warn you all to stay as far away from the theater as possible. The murderer will probably strike again. minute. This murderer seems to have done pretty well what he tried to do. Closed the old opera. First he pulled the raid, and when that wasn't enough, he really started putting on the pressure. Now it looks like he's going to get what he wants. And darned if I'm for letting him get away with it. Well, darned if I'm for sticking around to get strangled by my own beadwork. I've left a lot of jobs in my time, but I always stuck until the last kick in the pants if the job was worth having. And I'm not going to be scared out of the best job I ever had by a couple of ghosts. We're all stockholders, aren't we? We've got a right to protect our property. We've got a stake in seeing that the old opera keeps going. Come on. Who's going to be the first to chip in with me? Dixie, I'm, I'm with, with you. Help me in. I'm with you, Dixie. Yes. We'll stick and stick and stick. And stick. I'll be back in a minute. I want to get some cigarettes for the machine in the lobby. I'll be ready then. Bring me a pack, too. Where are you going, honey? To me? Well, I'm going down to the Peerless Bar and Grill with the rest of you guys for a midnight snack and a whale of a time. Said, you're hoping there will be time. It took only a few seconds for Lolita. 
a little longer for the princess, but she wasn't half dead already. And now, another lovely lady of burlesque, the loveliest of them all. I wanted to kill every woman on that stage, close the old opera. She'd gone forever. Once it was a place of glory. Oh, no. You aren't afraid of ghosts? I'll oh, be one. Oh. Not so free with the murders, pal. Sound like you're glad to see the face. Uh, I never was so glad to see a face in my life. Uh, what were you doing out there? Oh, me? Yeah. Watch it out. Remember a little grandstanding that flat foot here misunderstood? Yeah, the maypole. <laughs> and the reading matter I educated myself with in the clink? Yeah. Brannigan's taste in reading was unexpectedly useful. Very unexpectedly. Right in the middle of it, I found a dame's picture that looked familiar. The Burns. Her mother, sure, but I didn't remember it till I got a flash of that torn picture and checked it upstairs afterwards. Then all I had to do was look at the name, Statuero. Now, everybody knows how Statue or Statuero here was sour on burlesque. Must have really thrown him off his nut when he found his own granddaughter was working here. Granddaughter? Sure. You never know where you find a relative in show business, but Grandpappy's pride couldn't swallow us. You mean you figured that out all by yourself? Some grandstanding, huh? Now, the way I figure it, while he was hiding in the cellar during the raid, he sees you trying for the coal chute, and he really goes fast. Next, he tries his little strangling act on Laverne. The princess catches him at it, so that makes it her turn next. And while I'm upstairs trying to sell this story to these two, I hear about Gigi being dumb enough to leave you alone so he could finish what he started. Why didn't you just send him an engraved invitation, honey? Well, that does it. Why, you ham and bush league hawkshaw. Dixie had a hunch it was sassy ever since you spotted his hands at the mailbox. The hands are trying to choke her to glory. So she framed all this. I've been sitting down the stairs with, with him, waiting for something to happen. What we didn't know was the statue was already in the room. What I didn't know was that I'd be too scared even to scream. But I had to try my hunch out some way. Nobody seemed to think a lot of my intuition. As I said before, burlesque is a surprising business. <laughs> So surprising, it took a couple of burlesques to figure this out. Mr. Kelly, where were you? I was waiting. We, uh, I, uh, we had a, uh... You mean Stacy? Mm-hmm. Oh, the things that happen around here. Alice, are you all right? Oh, of course I'm all right. I had to go I to the I to I to I to I Routine. Oh, it's the same old routine. But maybe with a different finish. I want a blonde. You want a blonde? What kind of a blonde? Any kind. One like this, or one like this, or one like this. You look like you're a blonde at heart. Maybe I feel like one. Hey, lady, you left your motor running. <laughs> you started it. And I bet I can finish it. Brannigan! <laughs> <laughs> Invite the gang, Gigi. We're dunking donuts at a wedding breakfast. Ouch! Oh! Oh, Dixie! Look! Well? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't love thrilling? Oh, it sure is. Yeah. If only you'd speak up or do something. Well, I... I thought that you and that fall in there, y'all... Oh, don't uh, be silly. Never did like big fellas. Then, then you mean that you would? That is, <laughs> you could. You... Oh, you make me so glad. Oh. So there you have it. Another monochromatic movie marvel and a fun whodunit. This movie teached me that life in the theater is more than just killing it out on stage. Backstage, it could be the real thing. Also, those burlesque dancers had to really be in shape. I mean, there's no sucking in that muffin top with a Spanx or a girdle. Also, running up and down the stairs like that what endurance made me tired just to watch them. So until next time, or not.
This is Arachna of the Spider People, wishing you nighty night and reminding you that sleaze with cheese can be fun to watch, even if it's been censored by the Hayes Code. Deadly, are you sure this is where the Skeleton Burlesque Show is? It's an abandoned building. How do you get in? Oh, it's open. Hello? That must be the door to the theater. Hello? Anybody here? Hello? Deadly, good to see you. It's been a long uh. time. You two know each other? We saved you two seats up front. You used to work here. Follow me. Who's uh, your friend? I'm a Arachne of the Spider People. Oh. We don't normally allow living people in the show, but because you're with Deadly, we'll make an exception. Uh, thank you, I guess. Geez, Deadly, this theater's a filthy mess. It looks like it's been abandoned for a really long time. Don't worry, we cleaned all the bugs out of the seat. Right. There's definitely bugs in the seats. But that chandelier just came alive. Excuse me, these first two seats are saved. Move down. Thank you. Sorry. Show's about to start. Enjoy. Greetings and swim dipper salutations to all you skeletons out there. And welcome to the deadest burlesque show in town. And as you probably noticed, we've resurrected the old Burlicue Theater in honor of its 100th birthday. That's right. Over a hundred years ago, this theater hosted the best burlesque in this fair town. And tonight, we're giving the middle finger to said town for shutting us down. So this place has been shut down for a hundred years? No wonder it's a dump. You know, folks, back then I had a job at this here theater helping the girls in and out of their costumes for a hundred bucks a week. I know it wasn't much, but it was all I could afford. <laughs> uh, seriously, folks, uh, we have a great show for you tonight. More bad jokes, some music, and if the skeletons had any skin, they'd be showing it to you. So first up, right out of the grave and hosed off, ready to do her fantastic dance, Skelly La Boom Boom. Ain't she fantastic? Get it? Fantastic? 
Okay, let's hear it for Skelly La Boom Boom. Wow, Deadly, she must really like you. What? You knew her back when you worked here. Oh, you got to tell me about that later. And now for some illusory prestidigitation. Try saying that fast three times, folks. And ooh, look, we have a live female in the audience tonight. Ha <laughs> ha. Hey, why don't you come up on stage and help me with my act? I won't bite much. Uh, no, thank you. I'll just watch from right here. Oh. Okay, if you're gonna be like that, come to Papa. Ah, put me down! Ah, 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 ah. There, that didn't ah, hurt, did it? Ah, ah. Okay, and every magician needs an assistant, so Deadly, why don't you come up and help me too? Okay. So now that I have my victim, <clears throat> willing participant, and my assistant, I will attempt to merge divergent corpuscles and molecules. And I'll need you to stand back to back, line up exactly, that's right, okay. And now the tricky part. I will attempt to saw not one, but both of you in half at the same time. This won't hurt, I promise. That hardly ever happens. You change this back right now. This isn't funny. Okay, 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 calm down. I can fix this, all right. Okay, back up, back to back like you were. Line up exactly where you were. Okay, folks. This won't hurt either. You have wakened the phantom of the burlesque with your stupid show. I will punish you. The first. I will make you sorry you ever came here. Wow, Debbie, you skeleton sure know how to put on a show. <laughs> <laughs>